Welcome everyone to the Discraft Great Lakes Open, part of the Disc Golf Pro Tour. We're out here at the Toboggan Course in Milford, Michigan, enjoying a massive amount of elevation and some of the roughest rough in the country. I'm Sarah Hokum here with Juliana Corver to call the second feature card of round one. We have Sarah Hokum, Trina Allen, Vanessa Van Dyken, and Haley King joining us today on this card. This is hole number one. It is 477 feet par three, 60 feet of elevation loss. This is a blind left to right turning significantly downhill shot with the entire left side out of bounds. This can make for an intimidating start. I like to throw low on this shot and it is important to make sure that you turn the disc if you're throwing a righty backhand. Many women will be throwing the sidearm as the natural tendency of that disc falls towards the hole. 39th annual Discraft Great Lakes Open. We are ready for a three o'clock tea time. Team first from Caldwell, Idaho, Sarah Hoka. During the practice days, it was quite windy on this hole, but it was pretty calm during this round. A little bit of a headwind, but not enough for me to disc up. I'm going with a photon. Excellent. Looks like that's just outside of circle two. From Pipestone, Minnesota, Katrina Allen. Cat going with the M4 on a full turn with her backhand. Looks like it's going to hold that line. Yeah, I think she put it a little wider than she wanted. She was, she's almost pin high, but pretty far to the left of the basket. Vanessa had a lot of support out there. She's a California native, now Michigan resident. Going with the heat. That looks a little tight. Yeah, I believe that hit the rough and fell down. Yeah, she went deep on that first shot. Not how she wanted to start her tournament. Next, from West Bend, Wisconsin, Haley Kay. Haley lining up the sidearm, going with her Zeus. Does that have enough space to come back? No, and this is the mistake you don't want to make off this tee. One thing to make a mistake to the right and you're not out of bounds, but turning that sidearm over leaves her out of bounds pretty early. Thankfully, there were many, many spotters helping us during the round today. Yeah, so important on this course with the rough. Haley with a zone on her approach. One of the changes this year is that there are fewer OB lines. This is one of the holes that does have an OB line because it is adjacent to hole 18. Vanessa throwing a beautiful shot with her roach. Fantastic. So technical, because that, that late tree's on the right. She snuck it right there, right by the basket. This is an envy. Nicely done. Hole one did play as the hardest hole for the day with an average of 3.63. So just over a half stroke over par. That's, they've really optimized this course. 
Oh, great putt by Haley. Man, saving the bogey. Not only is that an elevated basket, but she was also putting from below. So that was a significantly high putt for Haley. Very nice. Nice to get, even after that miss off the tee, it's nice to get that putt in there right off the bat from that distance. Nice par. And I really want to get this birdie, but you have to take a, <laughs> a risk that I don't know that I'm willing to do in a headwind down that hill. <laughs> Tap in par for cat. Here we have hole two. This is a 426 foot par four with 76 feet of elevation gain. This hole is extremely steep. Though it only measures 426, it is a victory just to get inside the circle on your second shot. The steep incline makes a run up on the second shot much more difficult. When the last step of your run up is significantly above your previous step, it takes so much of your power away. Yeah, it feels like it plays more like five something, oh, five fifty, it, it maybe. It most definitely does. Throwing a vanish, trying to get some carry up the hill. It's a little low. Should have enough power to reach the top. You would think. <laughs> <laughs> Cat with an X3. She does slip on that pad. Yeah, that, that looked a little off for Cat. Although the pads are significantly improved from previous years as we have all concrete rather than the rubber mats. That's right. That's another new change this year. Prior, prior to this, there were never concrete tees on this course. Vanessa with a nuke, and she hated it right out of her hand. And then <laughs> it went perfectly to the middle. <laughs> Haley popping it way up there. Very nice. It is rather remarkable that they have concrete tees on this course due to the fact that it's only open to play about two months of the year. This is a relay that uh, burns out early. I had a really weird downhill um, lie. It was like downhill, but downhill for my toes, but uphill to the line. Yeah, that's confusing for it, sure. Yeah, it, for sure. It confused me. Now, even though this basket is elevated, the second shot, almost no matter where you end up with R, R being the FPO's collective distance, it is still a blind shot. And that's because the basket is positioned maybe 50 feet behind the crest of the hill. Yeah, I like to use that one of those those tree branches mm -hmm. in the middle as a marker of where the disc actually or the basket actually is from down there. You can kind of see that tree branch in the middle. Haley just throwing her putter at this point. Nice. Too deep of the basket. She really did have a lot of distance on that first shot. Hole two played as the ninth, ninth most difficult. Vanessa eyeing it down. Just a little, a little weak on that one. Katrina for birdie. Beautiful. Look nice and confident on that stroke. Haley for birdie. A too high. You know, the chains on these baskets are really heavy comparative to maybe the latitude basket or the disc catchers. I've noticed that as well. I saw a couple that hit on the high side and 
stayed in, but boy, it didn't look like they wanted to. Yeah, I had a couple spit from high in practice. So you got to hit center chains. I mean, that's that's the game. So <laughs> all the different baskets we we put on. This is hole three. It is a 950 foot par five with 64 feet of elevation loss. This is another iconic downhill shot. Players must first throw through the gap as there is thick rough on both sides. At the bottom of the hill, the left side opens up, but it is defined by an OB line. After a good first shot, players will be throwing their second shot towards the tall grass that forms a bunker-like obstacle in the middle of the fairway. Shots landing in that tall grass are not out of bounds, but it does hinder your footing. The basket is then raised about 12 feet from the middle of the fairway, so it is typically hidden from view other than the top of the basket. Cat going with the H3V2. I like the look of this one. Yeah, beautiful line. Nice and flipped up really well right down the hill. She'll have a foot a little tough on the footing. I'm throwing a plasma insanity. That also looks nice. Until the end. Oh, you do catch the foliage. Okay. Yeah. Ooh, we had a little bit of a tailwind. I think that's the adjustment I missed. Vanessa with a nuke, putting a move on it. Nice power by Vanessa. Haley throwing a Zeus on a little bit in an Anheuser. She's really getting greedy here. <laughs> She's... Wow. Catches that's, a little bit of foliage on the right side, but it's perfectly in the middle. That is big. 588. Holy cow. Very clean two finger out of there. Ugh, yeah, it was nasty. That, that rough on the right side is this, so tall. It is crazy hard to get out of. Cat with an X3. Yeah, that footing kind of messed with her a bit. I think she could get there otherwise. Yeah, well, this is a, a par five, and it's if you can stay out of the rough, this is kind of a, a lightweight par five. Yeah, agreed. A little bit soft. Certainly an eagle, eagle-able hole. Vanessa in a little bit of a tall grass, but she can still see the basket from there. Yeah, she won't need, probably won't even need a run-up from where she's at. I have enough height. Pin high. Yes. Throwing a trace. Struggled to get a distance reading and did not execute the shot. Were you not able to get the distance because you could only see the very band of the basket from where yep. you were standing? And I tried to walk back to get a distance and then subtract, but I kept either getting the grass that Vanessa's in or the flags behind the yeah, basket. the flags. I think tomorrow I'm going to have my caddy hold my cart and I'm going to stand on it to get that extra <laughs> three feet. That's a good idea. <laughs> nice, simple approach by Cat. This plate is the fourth easiest hole for the day, averaging 4.68. And Haley for Eagle. I wanted that to go in for her. But it did go in for Valerie Mondahano, Alex Benson, 
Paige Pierce and Kristen Tatar, all with Eagles nice. on the day. Yeah, you can see that tailwind now. It's such an adjustment to make the wind adjustments along with the extreme elevation. Yes, exactly. It's a guessing game in a lot of ways. This is hole four. It is 508 feet par four, 20 feet of elevation gain. There is an obvious straight or left to right turning shot and a not quite, not quite as obvious righty hyzer off the tee. Placement matters on this one, but it's more of a luck placement than a skill because those guardian trees in the middle of the fairway really matter as far as having a line to throw up to the basket on your second shot. Katrina goes roller here with her F7. Interesting. One that she's had since 2013. And it doesn't quite get over. She's in a tough spot over there. The guardian trees have a low clearance, so she's not going to be able to aim up towards the basket. And I doubt that she can go over the top of them, so she might have to lay up to the bottom of the hill. Vanessa with a heat. There's the straight shot. Now she's just hoping to find a window. I like it. Looks like she's got herself right in between those two trees and should have a good look. Haley with a Zeus. That's okay. She, you know, she's up there. It's a little bit tougher on that right side. Yeah, it's still doable for the birdie, but you're right. It's a little bit longer, and I think it makes the height a little harder. This is a vanish. Get in front of that. That looks like a good position. Yeah, best shot I've thrown on this hole probably, <laughs> certainly this week. Haley with a zone. Oh, there you can see her line. She actually does have a good look at the basket. You can't really tell where the brown on the fairway starts. It's already starting to uh, rise in elevation. So and she's kind of at the base of the hill to the pin. Yeah, I think her foot got stuck in a hole or something because she really was off balance on her follow through. Cat just trying to get up the hill, but again, she's that clearance on the high side is yeah. obstructing the shot. This is a crave. Oh yeah, that looks really good. Excellent shot. Vanessa for her third, looking to put this just under the pin. Now, you don't want to go too long here because it does drop away behind oh, the basket. Oh, some foreshadowing. How did you know? <laughs> I was trying to keep it a secret. <laughs> Haley with a long look. It's like Kat's trying to make this. Kat's got a nice soft up and down putt that she doesn't really have to worry about that falling behind afterwards. And hits a cage and does not get a roll, even though it looked like it might try. Vanessa with a comebacker for par. I like that angle, though, because you can actually see how much elevation there is to deal with. Excellent. Very good, Birdie. Moving on to hole five. 
Check in with the leaderboard. We've got Katrina, Ragna, Paige, Callie, and Tiger all at minus two through their rounds. And then the rest of the field is at minus one in the top ten. The scores are tight. Now we're moving on to hole five. This is 480 foot par three. This is 30 in five holes where players are throwing significantly downhill. This hole is lined on both sides by rough, but the rough is slightly more forgiving than that we've than the rough that we've seen on other holes. On the left-hand side, however, you can't really tell that it does elevate um, from the fairway up to the left. So if you end up on the left-hand side, you'll have a tricky footing. Throwing in insanity. Missed my line by a little bit, off to the left side. That place you don't want to be. <laughs> <laughs> Katrina going X3. Visually, I really like this hole with the red mulch down the middle. Agreed. And she gets a slip on her plant foot and kicks into the tough rough That's on the right. Second time she's slipped already. Yeah, she's, she's so powerful out of her legs. I really, she slips probably more than any player I've seen. Haley with a really nice line. That's a great position. Maybe 100 feet to the pin from there. Vanessa pulling her heat into the right tree. She said that she was a little bit worried about her footing when after she watched Katrina slip. Aww. And then consequently, you forget about, you know, to do your line properly. It's an easy, think, easy think, ma mistake. I think that was smart of her to just lay it up into the middle. Now, players do have to be careful because there is an OB line behind the basket. And this is a passion, Paige Pierce's newest disc, and she puts it right by the pin from way back. Cat pulling it into the rough on the left, H3V2. turning in there? I was hoping so, but it did not. So out well outside the circle. Difficult par three. Yeah, you need pinpoint accuracy to be able to stay in the fairway on this one. And Katrina is now on the other side off the fairway, but is safe. It was pretty close to the line, but she is not out of bounds. Haley with a little bit of a fluffy upshot. Maybe she's thinking about that OB line behind it. There's a lot of room back there, though. I mean, if you ask me. Yeah, I didn't really like that <laughs> attempt. I can barely tell where the basket Oh, that's a good view and right there. This is her bogey look. It was a good run through all that. And Haley for the par. Mm. Mm. Well, this hole played really tough for our card. It nope. came as the, in as the second most difficult hole for the day, averaging 3.61. And shout out to Ragna Big D on her debut back to the Pro Tour. Got this too. So it is gettable. With a fantastic drive. Yeah, I would like to see footage of that shot. I think Haley parked this on a post that she put on Instagram a couple days ago. Oh, nice. Yeah, 
Yeah, I really like the addition of this hole and then, of course, the very next hole. Get rid of any of those pressure thoughts and really center yourself, like where you're at and the shot you're throwing, trying to just really let everything besides the basket bleed away. <laughs> to the T, I have these game plans. I know where I want to land. I know the distance to the basket from those positions. I think I'm going to land in these same areas every single time, but you never know. I know how far I am. I know the height now. Having the Bushnell rangefinder, no matter where I land, gives me that extra level of confidence. Hole 6, 419 foot par 4. This interesting hole first winds from right to left for just over 200 feet. Then there's a valley that one must traverse, and then there's a pretty significant uphill approach to the basket. This green is also really tricky. It is. There's rollaways everywhere. In, in three of the directions. I'm throwing a relay. I wondered how it got there. <laughs> <laughs> There's a couple different plays here. One, you can lay up on the top side, or you can just throw all out and try to get down to the bottom and see what you're left with. Haley pushes us a little straight, and she's going to have a difficult approach pinched on that right side. Vanessa throwing the passion again. like it's in good position. There's a danger of hysering off too much and being too far left behind some of those trees. Cat going PA1. I like that play a lot. Yeah, and I like that they're up on the hill mm -hmm. still and not down in the valley. Just making that uh, second shot elevation a little easier to judge. And the basket's not right on the edge of the top of the hill. It's back a little bit farther, so you have to crest the hill and then turn slightly from left to right. Cat thought she got lucky there. She hit some trees. She hit some leaves on the left. And <laughs> Vanessa with a beautiful shot, throwing her roach. Really liked the intent of that shot. Yeah, Haley having to wind through some trees with her zone. But she's still right at the edge of the circle with a makeable putt. I'm throwing a pyro, which is really overstable mid. I close a little on the low side. Haley for birdie. She's been all over the basket. Yeah, that's, uh, she's pretty, she's usually pretty good to make those. And she's making attempts at them, but they're just not quite falling yet. Very nice pretty there. Cat jamming it in. Very nice. Easy birdie for Vanessa. Haley with the single par on the card. This is hole seven. It is 538 feet, par four, with 23 feet of elevation gain. This beautiful hole is harder than it looks. The best drives need to have enough distance and height to get up on top of the ledge, which is about 23 feet above the tee. If the players can get to the top of the ledge, then they'll have good footing and will have enough power to be able to get to the basket. I 
This is a vanish. Stay straight. Get up there. Oh, I think you're going to have a good run up there. Yeah, just barely crested the hill. Vanessa with a Hades. Uh, I like the distance, but she's a little pinched on that on that left side. This is one of the holes where I actually liked the men's tee position enough that I threw it in practice just because it was really fun. <laughs> <laughs> That's an X3 from Cat. Great distance, but she's going to have a hard angle through that opening. Yeah, she could throw a backhand from that position. It would be helpful, but I think she's in the rough too far. Haley with a Zeus on a nice turn. That's perfect. She's easily got enough power to get there. She's got a nice straight shot at the basket. Throwing another vanish. The trick on the second shot here is that the land slopes away in both directions, so you need to keep it very flat and in line with the basket. Vanessa with a run-up. I wasn't sure she'd be able to run up from that position, but, man, she hits her mark perfectly, and well on done. her follow-through falls backward but still executes the shot. Yeah, I can't expect much more than that from her position. Haley with a zone, a little bit high. Sneaks it through, not what she wanted though. She have another one of those tester putts. We've seen her attempting most of the round so far. Cat, yeah, it has to throw the sidearm out with her F7. It's a good line through there, but just didn't have enough power to get to the basket from there. And this is a layup. Maybe a safe run. A little elevator down at the end. It was pretty, whichever it was. <laughs> Haley from 40. Another low left. That's two in a row. From almost that exact same distance on the last hole. And Vanessa for birdie. Excellent. It sticks a little bit high right. She get that discraft love. This par four averaged exactly four. Very nice. Haley will tap in another missed opportunity. Hole eight, 390 foot par four with 54 feet of elevation gain. This is a nice righty sidearm hole as players just need to get in front of the big tree on the right and they will have a decent approach shot to the pin. A righty backhand throw can simply go straight or they can turn it to get a little closer to the pin. I think this is Probably the softest par four on the course. It feels like a bogey to me if you take a four here. Agreed. I'm throwing a trace. They used to, that whole left side used to be out of bounds. And I almost think they should bring that back, at least even just for the FPO side, just to increase the difficulty. Yes, absolutely. It certainly changes your mindset on the drive. If you land in the tall stuff, it obstructs your run-up, but you're so close to the pin that you really don't need a run-up. Yeah, truth. I, I think we could almost play from the men's pad here, and it would be a good hole. It would certainly increase the difficulty by a si significant amount, but I think it would make it, um, there would be more score separation. Yeah, I would agree with that. Cat with an X3. Yeah, and she even said after this, she's, she's like, she shrugs her shoulders like, I'm just trying to get as far as I can up there. There's no penalty for it coming out of it a little early. There is one thing off the tee 
that maybe we will be able to see. No, nope, not here. Oh, there, you can just see the branches to the top of the screen. They do come into play on a righty turnover shot. Yeah, if you're trying to get like big distance. Yes. Yeah. Haley threw her Zeus up there really well on just a pure hyzer. Great shot. You, you can't tell just how elevated that is. That is extremely uphill, the shot that you just threw. There you can tell a little bit better right here. Vanessa with a roach. There's no trouble with anybody reaching this, but the trouble is judging just how hard you need to throw it. And it's got a nice kind of backstop, so if you do want to kind of push it a little bit, you're yeah. not going to be too far past the basket. You can almost run at this one. Cat with an A2 using the sidearm to get out of the tall grass. <laughs> that, that grass is almost taller than she is. <laughs> Where'd she go? I don't know. <laughs> Peekaboo. Okay, there she is. Little small tester here for her birdie. No problem. Looks like birdie's around. Yeah, in fact, 76% of the field birdied this one. That might be the highest number I've ever seen on a birdie percentage. This is hole nine. It's 462 feet par three with 64 feet of elevation drop. This is a completely blind right to left turning shot. There is a low scooping righty backhand hyzer but you can't see the tree that you need to get by. There's also a tall over the top shot that will just fall off left. And then hopefully you have a good position to make it through the guardian trees to the basket. Throwing a vanish uh, with a backhand. And um, yeah, catch cam didn't get there because it didn't get past the, oh. the first oh. uh, cedar. <laughs> Ugh. Vanessa with a Hades. Throwing the high spiker. Yep, if you get in front of that tree, then there's nothing between you and the ring of trees right before the basket. Katrina with a D2. Also going up and over the top. Played a little flatter. She should get a little bit more distance on that. Wow. Circle's edge. Haley also going up and over the top with a Zeus. I like Puts it that. a little wider. Great shot. It is so rough in here. There are sticker bushes everywhere, and I have a tiny window. It looks like you hit the window. About all you could do from there. Throw in a relay. Get through that gap. And it hits something and kicks well outside the circle. Vanessa with a roach on her approach. This basket is also on a bit of an incline, so it feels like you can throw pretty hard at the basket without worrying too much about going long. Beautiful shot from Vanessa. Close. And Haley for birdie. There we go. There she finally connects on those longer putts today. She got that first one, but then hasn't made one since, and here it is. Full extension with the hand. Excellent. Now Kat here with a, a similar distance, but well obstructed. Oh, 
Oh my goodness, what a great putt. With a full <laughs> layout. That's great power from a straddle. Oh, check this so out. So wide. Full commitment. Does a little push up after she makes it. Beautiful shot. Oh, she likes that. That's a big old <laughs> smile. <laughs> and I'm tapping in a double bogey. So hard to swallow this after throwing the backhand and it biting me. I'm going to throw a sidearm tomorrow. <laughs> wow, and that's our front nine. So Katrina out in front at minus three. And everyone else is at minus one. Been kind of a roller coaster, but lots of green on this card. With all the elevation on this course, it's really fun to see the different shots and how they're affected by that elevation. Looking at the leaderboard, Paige Pierce out in front, followed by Kristen Tatar, Katrina Allen, and then Juliana's in a tie for th fourth at minus two, and then several at minus one. The scores are super tight. Looking forward to the back nine. Be sure to join us at GK Pro and like and subscribe. <laughs>